Good evening and welcome to St. Margaret of Scotland Catholic Parish. Our entrance hymn is number 317, Faith of Our Fathers, number 317.
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my cry. 
prayers. Lord, Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine upon us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine upon us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples recounted what had taken place along the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, Jesus stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But when they, they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost, then Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see that I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, Jesus said, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets must be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scripture and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You 
are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, this will mean something to some of you and perhaps nothing to others, but tomorrow evening there will be one golfer who will be wearing a green jacket. <laughs> Of course, this is the weekend of the Masters Tournament, and uh, there'll be one very happy man who puts on that green jacket. And we'll think of the others, of course, who will not be so happy. In fact, they might be very sad. And that's just the way humanity views victory and defeat. And we have many examples of this, uh, again, with sports. You, you crown one team the football, champion, you crowned one team the basketball champion, got one championship going. It's hard for us, beloved, as human beings to understand how defeat works in the plans of God, how seeming, crushing, life-altering, life-changing, and life-ending defeat works into the plans of God. It's really simple. Mama taught us all this lesson. God works in mysterious ways. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so they couldn't get it, the poor fellows. Jesus told them three times, but they still couldn't get it. He predicted three times in his ministry with them while he was alive. I will be handed over to evil men. I will be, I will suffer. I will be crucified. I will die and I will rise again. They still couldn't get it. Because it's hard for us as human beings to understand that sometimes in our life, certainly in the life of Jesus, but in our life too, the only important, important lessons we learn are the ways that we have to encounter difficulty and hurt and see that only God is so good that God can bring good out of evil. Amen? Amen? Nothing more evil has happened in the history of humanity than the Son of Man, the all-innocent Son of Man, who never sniffed a sin, except he lived and suffered with sinners who didn't deserve any of what he got, gave himself over to sinners so that he might die in life. So, listen, beloved, our heads are hard. Not even harder than that, our heads are hard. We've got to get it through our thick heads that God can use everything that's difficult in our life and our crosses in particular, if we don't reject them, to raise us up to. Don't forget the plans of God, greater than ours, much bigger. I could go on and on in my own life with a thousand examples. And you could too. We don't think clearly at the moment. That's what the apostles never did. They couldn't see that he would rise. And when they rose, they were still uncertain about it. They thought they'd see a ghost. So listen here. It does not matter that you don't agree with God. And that you have a better plan than God. And that you will change God's plan for you and somebody you love. That is not the way God works. We are his disciples. He's not our disciples. Amen? Amen. As my uncle used to tell us, we work in the store. And we'd start with young kids bossing around and say, remember son, I'm your uncle. You're not my uncle. Somebody's got to be the follower. And so this is the plans of God. They're greater than our plans. Did you not know that I would have to suffer? That the scripture said I would have to suffer so as to rise? And that the preaching for the forgiveness of sins would start in Jerusalem? And you are my witnesses to all of these things. So the great gift that we beg for is to trust that God has a 
great plan. That when we confront things that seem couldn't be part of God's plan in our life at all, we have to say, Lord, I'm no, I'm no greater than you are. I'm following you. I'm following your way. And I will witness through whatever cross I have to bear, whatever difficulties I have to endure, I will be your witness that I believe you and trust in you and that I know that by every cross you give me the gift of resurrection. Amen? Amen. That's the truth, isn't it? Yeah. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God to God, light to light, true God to true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the Father, who in all things made, for our sin and for our salvation, he came down to heaven. By the Holy Spirit, as a conduct of our humanity, became man. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his body. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is glory and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic and solid church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father is very good to us in confidence. We offer our prayers and petitions. In thanksgiving for the saving death and resurrection of Christ, and for the grace to see that God is working through the good and bad events of our lives, we pray to the Lord. Amen. In thanksgiving for the peace of Jesus and the mercy we receive from him, and that we be instruments of his peace, we pray to the Lord. In gratitude for the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist and in the life of other people, and that we may strive to be the presence of Jesus in all we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For God to bless all of our married couples with understanding, patience, joy, contentment, and love, we pray to the Lord. For all of our beloved relatives and friends who have died to see the face of God and live, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Pray for God's peace upon the Middle East. And pray for all men and women in the armed forces and for those that God will protect them by his mighty hand. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We offer to the Lord our own prayers and our desires. Dear Father, we praise you for your gifts and all for these prayers in the name of Jesus, your Son, risen, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, with the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the Church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your exalted Church, and as we have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they and we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Presence and minister to you 
Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, the most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have believed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Who am I with in the name of God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
Please join us in singing number 298, the song. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your 
morning, Lord, and grant me pray that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Also by Father Nancy Carlson to come forward. Father Nancy is celebrating their 55th wedding anniversary this day. <laughs> we ask God to bless you. Sure glad to be with you today. What a blessing. Thank you. Father Nancy, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May love stay shine upon you. May you continue to be the mirror image of Jesus loving his church by loving each other. May this sacrament be rich for you. May you help each other to heaven. May you continue to be witnesses of God's love in the world through your holy sacrament. And may God bless you on your 55th anniversary and every day. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's meet you other kids. <laughs> We're so proud to be with them and all of you. You married couples are the, the, the presence of Jesus in the world by the way you love each other. You're the living, breathing sacrament of Christ's love by your sacrament. So congratulations to Bob and Nancy. Thank you all for being uh, that in the world. I uh, would like to congratulate Richard Escobedo. So, uh, he's our newest minted server. And so Richard and all of our servers do an outstanding job of leading us in the ways of how to pray. So we're really grateful for those who train them and for our servers who teach us to pray at Holy Mass. And so happy to, for Richard and all of our servers who are very faithful. A couple of things here once. Now, the parish picnic is next Sunday. So please sign up that you might, how many would you like to come? So we can prepare the hamburgers and hot dogs and which you might like to bring as far as baked beans, cold slaw, chips, or dessert. Uh, also, the Knights of Columbus will have their meeting this coming so there is day. The deadline for uh, Magnificat renewal or subscription is the 21st. And that's very wonderful. It's such a blessing. Uh, the men of, of the parish are sponsoring two events. The men's club are sponsoring a Blue Wahoo's outing, which is awesome. So much fun. The Thursday, the 25th, and those are very limited tickets for the bus and so forth. So please uh, see, uh, call Gary. Uh, if you'd like to become involved in that. Also, the men are doing a, a champagne brunch on Mother's Day, which is actual champagne brunch. So uh, also you can get tickets to that through calling Ted. So make sure to take advantage of those two things. And last but not least, uh, our precious people from St. Benedict School, uh, uh, very faithful ones, will be in the nursery because they have an offer you cannot refuse. It's a win-win situation. So please see our friends from St. Benedict in the nursery so that they can offer you something that will be a win man. Well, uh, I'd like you to tell you what I'm asking you to do tonight. It's going to be a little bit different. I'd like for us to stand, and I want us to pray three Hail Marys. I said stand, but actually it seems as though there's a wider thing happening in the Middle East when I'm reading now, and that could be terrible for the world. So I'm going to kneel, and I'd like you to consider kneeling with me to ask our Blessed Mother three times, Our Lady of Peace, to protect the world. So we'll pray the Hail Mary three times. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thy common women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thy common women. Blessed is the fruit of God, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of God, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, the God of the Jew man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most blessed heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus the most holy sacrament of all. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, prayer of you. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be your holy and kind of conception. Blessed be your glorious conscience. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, the most chaste spouse. Blessed be God, and his angels, and his saints. St. Mark, the Archangel, the Venus of the Bible. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be given you humble praise, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Ghost, 